So you're considering moving to Florida and you want to know if St. Petersburg is the right choice for you. Well, pull out your list of concerns because today I'm going to answer your nagging questions about living in St. Petersburg, Florida that Google can't answer or just won't. In this video, I'll share my top three pros about moving to St. Petersburg, Florida, things to do when you live in the city, how friendly is St. Pete, then we'll dive into the seven important cons you need to know before making your final decision. I'll give you honest answers to the rising cost of living. Is St. Pete flood prone? Is St. Pete safe? Because let's be real. These are the things that you want to know or should want to know. And if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here. A little over five years ago, my wife Kate and I packed up our family of five, sold almost everything we owned and moved 1,200 miles south to the greater Tampa Bay area and have been loving it ever since. I'm also a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group where we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. If you need to get hold of us, all of my contact information is listed down below. Do not hesitate to reach out. Heck, there's even a link to my calendar down there so you can schedule time that's most convenient for you. So over the last five years, St. Petersburg, Florida has exploded in popularity. And since the end of all of the COVID craziness, it has amplified even more. And for outstanding reason, I gotta be honest with you, this is one of my favorite cities in all of Tampa Bay. I'm telling you right now, if you have never been to St. Petersburg, it is a vibe. The first thing I wanna do is share a little bit of geography. St. Pete is located just to the southeast of Tampa, right across the bay. Um, there are a couple different ways you can get there. As a matter of fact, there's three different ways you can get there, but the most popular ways to get from downtown Tampa, say you flew into Tampa International Airport and you were gonna come visit St. Petersburg, you would fly in and you would take the Gandhi Bridge, which takes you through South Tampa right over into uh, St. Petersburg, or you could take 275 known as the Howard Franklin Bridge. So both of those will take you over the bay into Pinellas County and down into St. Petersburg. And this is a big Big little city. Now, the, the city itself takes up roughly 20 to 25 percent of all of the county. And, you know, it, it, it's off, it runs off of a grid, so it's pretty easy to understand. You know, you've got Central Avenue, which is essentially like zero, if you were to look at it that way. As you travel north, the streets are First Avenue North, First, Second Avenue North, Third Avenue North, and as you head south, it does the same thing in reverse. First Avenue South, Second Avenue South, and so on. As you head from the bay over to the beaches, where St. Pete beaches, Madeira Beach, all these beautiful beaches that we have, it starts at First First Street and then works its way to Second Street and so on. So it's really easy to understand. The cool part about being in Pinellas County or St. Petersburg is ultimately it's it's kind of hard to get lost because eventually you're going to either end up in the Bay or you're going to end up in the Gulf of Mexico <laughs> and run out of roads. So it's not that complicated. And the entire county is roughly 12 miles across. So this isn't a huge area where, you know, you can just be lost for days. So I just wanted to share that because oftentimes people hear St. Pete, they hear Clearwater and they hear Tampa and they don't really understand, you know, how these things work together because, you know, people love to lump them together. But this is the greater Tampa Bay area. One of the cool things things about St. Petersburg is when you're in, you know, downtown, right on the bay in the marina, you can walk out to the St. Pete Pier and you can look over and you can literally see Tampa. It's such a cool thing to live in an area where that's an option for you. But the thing that makes this, this city so attractive is the culture and how it lives. And when we get into our pros here, these are the things I want to share with you. And I just want to tell a quick story about this, y'all. We live in the Indian Rocks Beach area on the Gulf Coast. Um, of Pinellas County. I'm roughly 30 to 35 minutes drive time to St. Petersburg, Florida. But this is a place where Kate and myself love to go on date nights. People love to ask, hey, where do you go hang out? Where do you spend your money? And as a local, if you're if you're not a local, understanding where the locals go spend their money, that tells you a lot, right? It can, it can give you a lot of indicators. If the locals are willing to go there, 
spend time, energy, and resources in order to just hang out or go dine, that should tell you that's probably a pretty desirable area. And that is one of the things that I think makes St. Pete so absolutely incredible is that it wraps all of these things up. So as we get into these pros, I just wanted to share with you like, this is my local perspective. I'm gonna share my personal perspective on this. I'm gonna share some statistics today. That way you know where to look. I'm gonna share incredible resources, you know, regarding crime, how to look at things. That way you can make a a really good decision about is St. Petersburg, Florida the right move for you? So the number one pro on my list about moving to St. Petersburg, Florida is number one, the incredible weather we have and access to the beaches. And I know these are two things, but I wanna combine them as one because we live outdoors, right? My wife and I, like I explained to you earlier, we live close to the beach because we wanted to take those sunset walks. And now we're considering buying a condo in downtown St. Pete because we love the urban, suburban bay vibe that that gives you. It's absolutely incredible. And St. Petersburg, Florida is known as Sunshine City. Now, what a cool, badge of honor to wear, but that is for a great reason. It has year round incredible weather. It gets hot in the summers. I've explained this many times before, but that is worth the exchange of no winners, right? I, t I often tell people what is different, you know, for us, you know, from living in Metro Detroit for our entire lives and moving to Florida. Well, the first thing is obvious, right? You do not have to shovel sunshine, <laughs> right? The winters are gone and it is, incredible the lifestyle that you get to have and then you can head over to st pete beach you know which is about a 15 minute drive from downtown st petersburg and now you've got miles of gorgeous white sugar sand beaches that are just abundant with sunshine and salty air and you know just a world-class lifestyle and this is something that people just absolutely love about living in the area and i think you will too the next pro on the list is activities and food scene. And this is where St. Pete, I think, gets the, the badge of honor, the award winner, if you will. Now, Tampa proper is definitely, you know, this is like 1-1-A, depending on who you are and what day of the week, honestly. But St. Petersburg is just unreal with all the things that you get to do. You can go hang out at the St. Pete Pier like we discussed before. And if you've never seen this thing, it is a monument to the sun and all things St. Petersburg. It is worth the trip on its own. You've got the Dolly Museum. We have a rich museum and art district. There is art everywhere. There are murals on all of the buildings as you travel down Central Avenue. You get to see just gorgeous art in all of these places. You can kayak in the bay, you can paddleboard in the bay, you can obviously boat in the bay, you can go fishing in the bay. There's a man-made beach right there in St. Petersburg where you can go hang out next to the pier. There's a splash pad downtown. We haven't even got it started talking about the shopping, the restaurants, the boutiques. Guys, I could tell you 15 restaurants right now that have literally changed the way that I think about food in St. Petersburg. One of my favorite, I'm gonna tell you one right now. Don't ruin this for me. Right? <laughs> Don't let this be the uh, Guy Fieri moment where um, he does diners, drive-ins and dives and then all of a sudden you can't get a seat in anymore. There's a burger joint in St. Petersburg, Florida called Engine 9. This place is unbelievable. They have these humongous hamburgers. You can get um, pulled pork on top. You can get brisket on top. They make all different types of burgers. And those burgers on their own are unbelievable. Kate and I will share one and it's still too much food. That's how good they are. But that is not the best menu item they have. They have honey sriracha chicken wings that are the crispiest, most delicious, wings I've ever had anywhere in the country. We just had friends in from Dallas and they were like, this is the best wing I've ever had. And I know I'm waxing poetic about it here, but like, we love the food, right? We go to the library, which is a great restaurant. We, if you've heard us talk about Casita before, one of my favorite taquerias, you can literally eat your way up and down St. Petersburg and never get tired of your options. It's absolutely incredible. You're going to love the food scene here. You're gonna love the activities. You're gonna love the outdoor lifestyle. There's nothing not to love about that here in St. Petersburg. Number three pro is the friendly chill atmosphere. Now I have said this before, you know, there's that old adage of wherever you go, there you are. So if you're a knucklehead and you're looking for trouble, you can find it in St. Pete. I'm never gonna tell anybody other than that. But if you wanna come here and you're looking for that laid back, you know, chill, flip-flop lifestyle, island time, you will find it in abundance in St. Petersburg, Florida. And 
This is a huge reason why we have just absolutely fallen in love with the entire Tampa Bay area. You know, we came down for that lifestyle. That was the draw for us. Yes, Abundant Sunshine was on that list. We needed to have sun. We were tired of the cold, gray, dreary winters that we had up north. So that's why we moved here. But what we found in return was we also had access to, again, world-class dining, and most importantly, this laid-back feel. And the thing to recognize about moving to St. Petersburg, Florida, is so many people who live in the area here aren't from here. And, you know, I know a local will say that's a con, but honestly, if you're coming with the mindset of making a community better, then that is a value to the community, number one. But number two, there you're gonna find so many people like yourself who are either in the process of, of moving and relocating themselves, just went through it, or went through it 10 years ago, y'all. And with that in mind, you're going to be in a community that we have found to be extremely welcoming. And like I said, you can find trouble, you can find knuckleheads anywhere in the country, I know that's true. But if you come here in the mindset of, we're gonna make the best of it, this is an incredible community, I can't wait to contribute to the overall quality of the community, I assure you that St. Petersburg is going to reciprocate and you're going to love it. I see the comments and questions that you leave down below, and I know that the most honest answer is always the most helpful. So I wanna do two things right now. First of all, I wanna invite you to that comment section Make a contribution here, right? Listen, people read those comments. If you're watching this video and you're local and you wanna to contribute to the conversation, please do. Um, secondly, uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment down there. I respond to all legitimate questions down there personally. I don't have an assistant or a bot that answers those, but I wanna make sure that you guys have an opportunity to connect again with me and the local community here. So don't hesitate to leave a comment in that section below. So the first con I wanna tackle right now is the 800 pound gorilla in the room, and that is the cost of living in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, and I'm gonna be honest with you, the cost of living in St. Pete is higher than the national average, and it's higher than other areas in Florida. So that is something to take in consideration, which ultimately means that paradise really does come at a cost. St. Pete has seen a huge increase in housing prices over the last four years from new residents moving into the area and investors swooping in and wanting to get in on the action. And once you factor in the limited housing supply, the age of the properties, because let's be real, most people don't wanna buy a home that is 60, 70, 80 years old, and you find a lot of that in St. Petersburg. So the good ones get scooped up really fast, and this is why this market has become incredibly competitive. Now, there are developers and investors who have moved in the area that are building new homes. Would I consider them affordable? No. In order to put a new home up in St. Petersburg, you got to tear down an old one. They're also putting in um, new luxury condos. There are affordable housing options that are out there, but they're relative to the cost of living. And if the cost of living is higher in St. Petersburg, it's something you're going to have to take into account. Now, the median home price in, in Tampa Bay right now is right around $400,000. St. Petersburg falls right in line, but we're talking about a three-bedroom one or two bath home that is only 1100 square foot on average. So when you hear that number and you look at areas like Wesley Chapel, where for the same money, you can get a four bedroom, two and a half bath home that is almost 2000 square foot that's brand new, this is why people are challenged when it comes to living in St. Petersburg, Florida. Rents have gone through the roof with this increase in demand also, so that is something to take in consideration. Groceries, I've shared this many times before. I feel like groceries from where we moved from in the Midwest to here um, have gone up 15, 20%. And of course, inflation has just been kicking everyone's behind. Every time we go into Publix, I swear we spend $90 and get one bag of groceries. That's a little tongue in cheek, but it can be real at times too. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what the cost of groceries are. Let us know below, wherever you live, let us know where you live and let us know, is the bag of groceries costing you 60, 70, 80, 90 bucks to get out of the door? We don't shop at Whole Foods. So I definitely have that question in regards to the cost of living. The average utility cost is gonna vary, you know, based upon the home, of course, but you know, if you look at the data, it says it's right around 175 bucks. 
we don't see those types of numbers. I mean, if you have a three bedroom home that's 1500 square feet for an example, with the AC running all the time, you're probably gonna be spending 250 bucks a month. You got water included. We usually spend $100 on that. So just keep that in mind. Healthcare overall is less expensive here in the greater Tampa Bay area and in St. Pete. I don't know what it compares to where you live. One of my favorite tools on the planet to use when it comes to the, the cost of living, there is a calculator. If you go to Forbes Cost of Living Calculator, and then I'm gonna put that right up over here. You can literally type in the city you wanna move from, the city you currently live in, and put in your salary and it will adjust it accordingly, telling you roughly how much money you have to make in order to live in that new area. I hand this over to clients all the time. They love this tool. I think you'll love it too. Now, the second con on the list is traffic in St. Petersburg. And listen, it is a large city, okay? It's a small, big city is the way that I would put it, or a big little city um, is probably a better way to put that in. So you're going to have a fair amount of traffic, especially around times, you know, peak drive times, right? So the, the morning drive to work, the afternoon drive home. These This is normal in almost every single area in America. So I know that that's not unique, but St. Petersburg hosts a lot of events, right? You've got the Tropicana Field down there where the Tampa Bay Rays play. There are bars and restaurants galore all up Central uh, Avenue. You've got the Marina downtown. There are a lot of things that draw people into St. Petersburg. The Rowdy play soccer down there, um, all the museums, and this can add to the traffic you mix that in with a lot of people who are out and about living in the city, walking across the streets, and this tends to slow traffic down. When you get real close to downtown, you can feel that on Central Avenue. It just takes a while to get down there. It's a leisurely stroll anyways, you know, so that's kind of the, the mindset that's going on there. 275, the main highway in and out of St. Petersburg, especially during peak drive times, can get really, really congested. My recommendation is to take other alternate routes during that time period. Once you're out of those peak congestion hours, it's usually not that big of a deal. But even on a Saturday or Sunday when we go to St. Pete, we'll still have that you know, stop and go. It's not like you're gridlocked forever, but you will be sitting a little bit longer than you probably expected. So just make sure you put adequate drive time in there. And also keep in perspective, you've got so many people moving here from all different areas of the United States and across the world. They bring their driving habits. You're gonna run into some unique experiences. Um, as an example, two years ago, ago when F1 was here, we had our truck parked right on Central Avenue, right across from the bodega, which is a great sandwich shop, by the way. And um, some knucklehead in a Camaro um, tried to pass the public bus and um, broke their tires free, ran in the back of our truck, and then totaled two other vehicles. I mean, like, insane y'all <laughs> my my poor wife we only had that truck for probably maybe a month and we were we were having ice cream with the family and we come walking up and you see all these police cars and we're like oh man somebody got hurt and as we started to get closer to the truck everybody's standing around my 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 vehicle and i was like man this is gonna be us and of course i walk around and the cop's standing there he's like hey is this yours and i'm like oh man and i walk out and then you can see what happened right here it was just it was a bummer. So traffic is not my favorite thing. The third con is also a pro and that is weather. If you've been watching any of my videos, you know it always swings on both sides, right? We have five months of absolutely glorious, incredible weather, right? The, the winters are dry. They're 70 you know, degrees on average, give or take a, a few degrees, which is amazing. Sun is abundant. All those things are wonderful. And then the summer comes and the heat becomes what I have heard deemed as oppressive. And I think it's a fair term. Um, I've shared this story before, but I had a friend of mine when the very first year we moved here, we moved in the month of December. I went over to Fort Lauderdale um, for a conference in January and I had a friend of mine say, Juan, have you ever lived through a Gulf Coast summer before? And I said, no, why? And he laughed, he goes, he goes well, it's like waking up to a Labrador retriever breathing three inches from your face. And I was like, it can't be that bad. Eh, I think it was fair, it was fair. Those summers and the, the July, August, September are the months that I'm really talking about. Those are some of our toughest months. We average right around 90 degrees and it can be stifling with the humidity. So keep that in mind. That's why you have this term snowbirds. And 
Snowbird is uh, someone that we affectionately refer, refer to as a northerner who travels south for the winter, but goes back home in the summer. <laughs> they follow the migration pattern of a bird. That's how they got that name, right? And for good reason, they're leaving the 90 degree heat. What you will find here, you know, as, as we live here for five years, most of our friends, most of the people we know, they pack up and take vacations and they head north, right? Or they go west in the summer to get away from some of that heat, give us some relief, but you know, is it unbearable where you can't live here? No. Do I understand how people lived here without air conditioner? That I can't wrap my mind around, right? That's the reality of it. So just make sure you prepare for weather because it is gonna be hot for those three months. We have five months that are what I would consider above average in terms of temperature. Um, if you're from anywhere else in the country, they're warm, but those three months are the ones that are, we could call oppressive, if you will. Now the weather leads us into our number four con of living in St. Petersburg, Florida, and that is flooding. And let's be real, St. Pete is flood prone. Now is every single area or neighborhood in St. Petersburg prone to flooding? The answer to that is no. Are there a lot? Yes, that is something you need to be aware of. St. Petersburg is in a low lying area. It's sandwiched right in between Tampa Bay and the Gulf of Mexico, like we said before. The real estate is a little bit older. We get a lot of heavy rainfall, especially during the summer, which adds to the water table on top of the fact that you're right next to these two large bodies of water. So you got that to take into account also. So these are things you need to be mindful of, right? I, I had a, a client recently reach out to me. He, he absolutely loved a home. He's like, Juan, I love this home. I wanna go take a look at it. And as soon as I saw that it was in Shore Acres, which is a neighborhood just north of Historic Northeast, which is a wonderful neighborhood, by the way, a whole area. And it's right by Snell Isle as well. So if you're looking on the map, you can check that out there. But as soon as I saw it was in Shore Acres, I was like, I'm pretty sure that house flooded. Um, and they were selling it for less than they purchased it almost a year and a half ago. And our real estate values have done nothing but increase. So that's always a red flag right away. I reached out to the listing agent and of course, yep, it was underwater during Hurricane Adalia last year. St. Pete flooded twice last year, not the whole city, remember that, right? There are areas where you can go that are higher out of that lower elevation and get you away from the floodplain, but you need to keep this in mind. Anytime you're buying coastal real estate anywhere in the United States, you need to take into account the fact that you are in an area that is most likely susceptible to flooding of some sort. So just keep that in mind. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the um, Pinellas County evacuation zone. This map will show you the level of intensity you can expect from storm surges. And this map is awesome. So I'll put this up right here so you guys can check this out because this is an extremely valuable tool when you're thinking about moving to the area. Now here's the thing I want you to understand about this map. All of those red and purple areas where you see, people live there. They've been living there for over 100 years <laughs> and the houses have survived. That's something to take into account. But your insurance costs, your homeowner's insurance costs and your automotive insurance are going to cost more if you live in an area like that because you're at risk of flooding. So just keep that in mind. There, are, Again, there are different ways to look at this. I'll put the FEMA flood map down below. I'll give you guys all the resources I actually can. That way you can make the best informed decision for yourself. Our next con about living here in St. Petersburg, Florida is the red tide. Now I have discussed this in a lot of other videos, gone in depth on it, and I wanna share with you, I'm not a marine biologist, nor am I a weatherman. I'm going to share with you my understanding based upon the things that I have read, the news articles, et cetera, okay? So dig deeper if this is really important to you. Now, red tide is a naturally occurring algae bloom. Um, now, algae, needs a food source and it also grows really well in warm moist areas right that makes sense to me you know mold and mildew will grow where it's warm and moist well gulf coast is warm and moist especially during the summer you know the 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 waters in the gulf of mexico can reach almost 90 degrees you know here in the greater tampa bay area in the peak in the summer it's like warm bath water right and the bay is very similar in that respect also. So, you know, we have these, these torrential downpours. People will, you know, try to keep their lawns green by fertilizing them. Um, 
you know, we have more waste in the area than we ever did before. And all of that runoff has to go somewhere. So all of those nutrient rich, <laughs> you know, rains that, that push, you know, fertilizer and all of our waste into the Bay or into the Gulf of Mexico, because that's how it works, y'all. Um, they tend to fuel these, these algae blooms and they can really ramp up during really warm seasons. Now we've been here for, this will be our sixth summer um, this year. And we have experienced um, six already. We visited the first year. Um, there was red tide the first year we visited. That didn't stop us from moving here. I want you to be aware of it, but it can be um, difficult on your respiratory systems when it's really bad. Just keep that in mind. It kills fish. It kills marine life because it actually starves them from oxygen. Um, and, and they end up dying and now they float to the top. And I know I'm not painting, painting a pretty, pretty picture here, but I want you to be aware of the truth because when it gets bad, it's about as bad as it gets. Um, and out of the six summers we've been here, we've experienced red tide, three of them. So that's 50%. Um, the, the first one, again, we experienced it. We weren't living here, but it was pretty bad that year. The next year it was just so, so. And then the following time when we experienced it, it was bad. We didn't even go to the beach for two full months. And that kind of stinks when you come here and that is the lifestyle you're trying to achieve. But it's part of the sunshine tax. It's part of the thing we have to deal with. Um, I would love to be able to stop that. All the residents would love to be able to stop it, but you know, it's part of living in, in an ecosystem that has so many things going on with it. And again, we're probably fueling it. Again, I'm not getting into the whole climate change debate. That's not the point. But there is a, certainly a fact that you know, by us fertilizing our lawns, you know, the things that we do on a daily basis that runs off and, you know, the nitrogen and those things are just feeding those algae blooms. So keep that in perspective, do your homework, due diligence on red tide. It is important to be aware of. Um, in, in the time that we've been here, it hasn't been nearly as bad in St. Petersburg as it has on the Gulf Coast usually, um, but it is something to be aware of. So the sixth con on our list is bugs. And this is something that before we moved here, we thought, you know, that the bugs were gonna be absolutely terrible. We, you know, we didn't know how we were gonna deal with it, to be quite honest with you. You know, we had family members tell us that Florida has the worst mosquitoes and where we live, it's not a problem. I, we have very little mosquito bites ever um, compared to where we lived in Michigan. So like that wasn't true. Um, we do have lizards that run around all over the place and we will have a gecko get in the house every once in a while. Those things like to eat things like spiders and mosquitoes. So it's not necessarily bad. We're not keeping them. <laughs> we get, we shoo them out of the house, but like in the five years that we've been here over five years now, we've probably had a handful of geckos get in the house. Um, we have uh, these other little brown lizards called anoles. They hang out, they eat all the bugs by your house too, but it does freak, freak people out. The other thing is there are snakes here. Um, now I've seen one snake in the five and a half years that we've been living here. So keep that in perspective also, um, you know, just in terms of what that looks like. We've never seen an alligator in our neighborhood in five years, never had a neighbor tell us there's an alligator in our neighborhood. Is it possible that you could see one? 100%. I tell everybody the same thing. If there is a open body of fresh water in the state of Florida, assume there's an alligator in it. They don't want to mess with you. They don't want to be on their own. They want to be left alone. And my encouragement would be to do it, leave them alone, right? But, you know, people ask, they're like really concerned and I understand, but it, in, in our experience, this hasn't been one of those things you need to be aware of. The little buggers that you need to watch out for are called no see I'm going to say that again no see -ums. and they're exactly what they sound like. You can't see them until it's too late and then they bite and they bite hard. A mosquito, you like, you can feel the sting a little bit afterwards, but you know, they do the whole thing where they numb you before they uh, stick their needle in your arm, right? But like no see it's like getting, I would say it's not as bad as a horse fly because that's about as bad as it gets. But like, it's got that kind of like sharp pinch to it and you can feel it. Um, be aware when you go into shaded, moist areas, right? If you're walking out in parks and nature preserves and you go into a shaded area, especially when it's hot and muggy, that's where you can usually get bit by an OCM. So just keep that in mind. But overall, the pest and bugs haven't been terrible. Um, I wouldn't let that deter you from moving here, but it is something to be aware of. The number seven con on this list is crime. And here's why I'm making this a con. Two reasons. Number one, I hold a professional real estate license, so I can't actually tell you some place is safe or it's not. I hate it. It drives me nuts. There are things I would love to say, <laughs> but I cannot do it. However, 
I can share my personal experience, number one, and I can share with you the resources where to go find the information that you're looking for. And that's what I'm gonna do for you. So number one, I've already shared, we opened this video by telling you that me and my wife go to St. Petersburg often. Guys, we're probably down there three to four times a month. On purpose, we go spend our money there. I would never go to an area and spend money regularly in a place where I didn't feel safe. We take our family down to St. Petersburg. I have three young children. My oldest is 11, my youngest is five. We would never put them in harm's way. I have never felt anxious about being in St. Petersburg, even at night, even hanging out. Now, I'm not putting my nose in places I don't belong. Do those places exist in St. Petersburg? 100%, they absolutely do. Um, I cannot tell you what those, those areas are specifically, but I am going to put a link to the Tampa Bay crime map down below. I love this website. This website will show you all of the recorded and documented crime that happens in, in the entire Tampa Bay area. So whether you're looking in areas like Wesley Chapel, Odessa, downtown Tampa, Riverview, Brandon, Apollo Beach, Parrish, Bradenton, Sarasota, or St. Peter Clearwater, you can see exactly what's happening there. My recommendation for you is if you're considering moving here, put your city's ad uh, address in there because it is a national database that I'm sharing with you. So you can go compare it to where you live. And the reason that I say that is because people often have a bias. We believe that where we live is safer or those things aren't happening. And when you pull that map up, it actually shows you that they are. It'll show you what type of crime, It'll show you the date, it'll show you the public record on it. So that is a wonderful resource to do it. Again, are there areas in St. Petersburg that um, statistically are um, safer than others? The answer to that is yes. Again, I can't tell you which one is which, but I can show you where to find it, y'all. <laughs> I can definitely show you where to find it. Uh, and again, going downtown, going to ball games, going to dinner with my wife, taking the kids down to the museum, to, to games, to the marina, never, ever have I been concerned about what is happening in that city. There's a great police presence. There are citizens everywhere. The residents are out having a good time. They are enjoying the quality of life that St. Petersburg has to offer. And when it comes to moving to St. Petersburg, Florida, and the quality of life in St. Petersburg, Florida, I think you're gonna find it, you're gonna be very hard pressed to find areas that give more of a laid back, flip flop, whole vibe than St. Pete and we've come to love it. My guess is you'll probably love it too. If you have any questions about St. Petersburg or moving anywhere in the greater Tampa Bay area, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. Like I said before, all my contact information is listed down below. There's even a link to my calendar so you can schedule the time that is best for you. YouTube's gonna put two videos up here to help you answer more questions about St. Petersburg. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.